Today, I think uh, I'll speak a little bit on comparison, comparing. Uh, this is what's hanging a lot of our people up. So I'm going to you. You know, it's a, uh, a difficult thing to have quite a bit of effort placed in motion to make sure our people have a proper opportunity to make it to tomorrow. Because if you look at today, in the world of today, there is no future, there is no tomorrow for them. Um, you can take this hotel, for example. You can tell when they were first built, it was like really up to snuff. Look at it now. You know, well, as far as black people is concerned, it's still up to snuff, but we don't have one. You know, so we're going to have to get one of our own and uh, run it for ourselves. However, uh, for the brothers to come down and come up with the flyers and walk around to the people and pass them out, talk to them and do quite a few things. And then the pervasive lie is I'll be there. I'll be there. Because what you're hearing and you're seeing a person that's delivering it to you is like, no, I've got to be a part of that. So your nature is speaking one thing and as soon as they leave or you leave them, then another thought comes. Yeah. Don't make no difference if I show up. You know, I ain't, ain't nothing going to happen no how because things still going to be the same. That's comparing, but that's ignorantly comparing. There is nothing that you see that's placed on top of the earth that man didn't do. And in the beginning, like you see on other, all the other planets, if you have the ability to see them, you see nothing erected from any type of intelligent life form. It's void. However, on this particular planet, you see many things. And the things that everyone is comparing God to, the real God, they're comparing him to the God that's here, the false one. So if the real God don't have cities and towns and villages and uh, a working something for you to do in a working way, or give you activity, you think he don't exist. So the real God in your mind is that it's this world. Everything that you need or think you need, you can go to a person that you actually can see, feel, touch, hear, and get what you went for if you meet the criteria. If you go to the bank, you want some money, you go to the bank to make a loan, well, then you go to a person. You don't pray. You might say, well, I'll pray over it. And then you end up still going to the bank. All right. That's of this world. Now, if God is going to come and change everything, let's look at what he's got already here and what reason he has to come to change anything. If it was in accord with what he had created and made, it would be no need for him to come. He may already be here because there's nothing offensive to him because this is what he made. You know, it's like you have your own family. You got four or five people in your family, and they're growing up, your children and sons and daughters, your wife, your husband, and father. Everybody's familiar with each other, and nobody's a threat. So you're comfortable. Then here comes some distant, distant relative. They have no place to live, and they come, and you let them in, but they're little rascals. Now they got the whole house tore up. So now you say, hey, either you going... Oh, I got to go. I'm not having this. So what we see on this world is like God said, well, I already see what's going to happen before it happens. So I'm leaving. In my absence, this man can go ahead and do whatever he wants to do in my absence. And when I return, I'm going to take everything back where it pleases me, not him. And this is a classic example. How many people in here do you see this Caucasian in this meeting? You think they're so dumb they didn't know the meeting was going to be carried on? They know what is coming in is not to their advantage to their nature. So they don't show up. And they make sure if, if they have this...
these high orders of organizations and clubs, you can't get in because it's not really to your benefit for you to even know what they do and how they do it. But let's look at why God would come after he let this happen. First place, you can look at a tall, erected building by man's mind or a man put it up. We call them contractors. What building is higher than Mount Everest? Is there? Did man put that up? So should God come back to take what belongs to him? What man made a river? You know, something you need every day, water. You need it every day. What man made it? Now, we can go on and on with this. In other words, what I'm saying is there is something that's natural that God come to give relief to. The earth is crying out for relief. And only the ones, the designer of it, can actually do this. We, we got an uh, insurmountable amount of evidence that the man that's already here will not or cannot bring relief. Matter of fact, he's the one to put the stress on the planet. Now, the most important element of the planet is you. We can make other planets. That's not hard to do. But to make a man that's going to master the planet, be in accord and in tune with the planet, to perpetuate its function and motion, that's not easy to do, to start all over again. So since you're already here, and you've gone under another man against your will, however, it still took place and is taking place. So God has something to come to retrieve. Upon his arrival to retrieve you, it is you that is comparing. This is not just in Mobile. This is all in North America. This language, this message, in any other part of the world, wouldn't be received the way it should be received here. Because most every other place, the black man has some land he can say he's in charge of. He can say it's his. As a people, here in North America, that's impossible. Black man as a people owns nothing. We don't own the factory to make this mic. We don't own anything. So since that is the case, looks like this is a perfect place for God to show up. Are you all listening? Well, why would God want to show up in a scenario such as this? First place to make himself known. Known to who? To the other God. If he don't make himself known to the other God, you won't know him either. As long as the other God looks more powerful to you in your comparison, you will not take a second look at the real God. So in his course of making the other God, the false God, the unreal God, pay attention, then it also makes you pay attention. Wasn't it about two or three weeks ago, everybody was warned by the other God, pack your things and get out of here? You remember that? Now, if he was the real God, he would have to say that. He said, a storm is on the way, but I'm holding out in the bay or in the Gulf. It will never hit land. No, don't even worry about it. However, you all are comparing without the knowledge of the real God. Whatever you're using to compare with is the knowledge of the God that you've been worshiping all your life and your parents and your parents, parents, parents. Over 400 and some years, you've been worshiping this man as God. You don't call him to his face as God, but everything that you need, you go to him and he acts like God. Well, the real God want to come and speak with you to let you know what is happening. What is happening? Not, not a message. We already sent the messenger. 
He delivered the message. And we took it. Now God himself shows up. Look where God has to come. To a structure where the other God built. Because you all did not follow the instructions of the messenger. The messenger, in his message, said, Up, you mighty nation, and accomplish what you will. He was talking to the black man. Is that right? Well, we look around, I can't find nothing that he accomplished. Every city that I go to, every town that I go to, every time I go and speak to our people, it's never in our place. You got to always go to another man and rent his place for God to come and speak. Now, while I'm speaking, or before I'm speaking, at the same time I'm speaking, I have places. I have activity. I have a system set up that will cause us to be successful beyond your, as this world say, wildest dream. Others that the book reads, there was no end to this man's knowledge. There's no, they couldn't find no end to it. The wise men of the planet, they looked up, the ones that wrote history 25,000 years in advance before it happened, when they started writing, they got to the 15,000 years, hey, we got to put this down. We don't know what he's going to do, but however, whatever it is, it's greater than anything we know. Okay, so the God shows up. It appears as though Satan has done his job well. Or shall I say, he has kept his promise. And he promised when he was told, look, Satan, get behind me. A God talking to Satan now, you know, not some your witness. Get thee behind me, Satan. He said, okay. I'll go up the line and wait for you. And by the time you get there for your people, they're going to curse you in your face. They're going to curse the name of you. It looked like he did it. He was successful. In other words, when God actually should. Now, this requires thought. You can say, well, yes, I've heard this many times. I still haven't seen nothing different you're comparing. Well, in your comparing, consider this. What is it that you see? That's in accord by nature with the running of the world you see today. What entity in the world today that's being ran by man or mankind that expresses, shows, develops, experiences peace? What entity? What government agency is not in confusion. Which one? So if that's the case, if they're confused, what are you? So if they're on the way to hell to be burned up and you refuse to look at the God that come to get you, what do you think you're going to do? They're going to burn, but you're not? Oh, no, sir. No, sir. You shall be crackling in the fire just like them. Because there's one thing about God, or shall I say Allah, that's different from all other beings, all other gods. There's one thing that's different. You know what it is? He's independent. If nobody shows up, he keeps his word. I'm getting rid of this government. I'm getting rid of this world. I'm taking mankind out of existence. I'm getting rid of Satan. So now, if you want to be with me, let's go. If you don't, hey, you live Satan's life, you're going to die his death. You live the life of the devil, you're going to die his death. Matter of fact, if you're not with me, look for death. And then if I like you, I may let it visit you. I mean, you, you really need to listen to this. And if I like you, I may let it visit you. Well, how can you prove that, God? We can prove it because we allowed 40 years 
was a people that heard the message and had too much fear of their slave master into them to go into the hereafter. So we allowed death to visit them. Forty years of it. To die off and then take their children into the hereafter. That's mercy. Now, if the children come up and don't want no part of this, there's no more time for mercy. You either going to do this or you're going to cook. Period. And it looks like most of you all that are young is in the pot. You got so much rap in your ears. So much undisciplined about yourself. No morals. All the things that requires you to even have a clear thought of a law. You don't have it. So that's a sentence to death. You're in misery now. Most of our young people that we see that are black, that's on the street or whatnot, if they're young, you can't get no respect from the law or law officials. You look like animals. You see them shows they have on TV where they're stalking the deer and the uh, turkey. And they got these special made guns and bullets and they, they can make it even sound like ducks. And, you know, they see you less than that. Because they know a duck can't be but a duck. But you, all these loose baggy clothes on around down to your ankles, they don't know what you got in there. So he set you up and you follow it. So when God comes and says, look, you got to get rid of that, let's go. <laughs> well, I don't see nothing you're doing. Well, we're building, building. We are building. It's not that I'm coming and press the whammo, everything is over. He didn't read, he don't even read that. It reads that all of the formal things, all things, passed away. Not press the whammo away. Is that right, brother Minister? Yes, sir. However, the key is most of the young people have no idea concerning the Bible or Quran. They don't know what it means. Most of them never even read it. And their parents got so traumatized when Elijah came and got everything set up. He got a, he just only had a message. But to make sure that the message had power in it, he started building a nation. Just from a message, started building a nation. So this may look like, but this is powerful. Now, because we took him in the void, the overnight thing, when he left, darkness came. Until the rising of Allah himself. So that's why it's in the lessons, he said he wanted everybody to look fly to Allah. And overnight, you have money, good homes, friendships, and all walks of life. Overnight. They never knew how long the night was and when the night even started. So they never taught their children anything of Elijah in no meaningful way. So now, if they did teach a few things, they were followers, not knowers. So they couldn't teach their children in such a way where they knew that they knew that they knew. They didn't have nothing as a nation to back up what they were saying. So this automatically makes the child say, oh, I don't want no part of that. I'm going out right in the street. So, you know, the worst kind of child is the preacher's child. Yeah, because he knows his father's lying. So it's the worst kind, like the same principle happened with those ones that was with the messenger. They seen all this sacrifice they did. They grew up watching it, then the message is gone, then they see that they really don't have no power. So why am I going to follow with this? Why am I going to do that? Are you listening? Yes, sir. We're still on comparison. So now they are comparing what the message said or their parents opposed to what's happening. Now remember, white folks never stop developing things. The messenger is gone, so now we got stagnation. But they're not stagnant. If you get what I'm saying. So, if there's anything being shown to you that's making progress, it is the man of sin doing it. So now 
Now, you have no interest in no Bible. If you do, you do it in a fanatical way. Jesus, Jesus, you to death. Now the church started losing appeal to young people. They rather go out and rap to death. And their parents is all up into the church and they cannot find nothing in the church that's going to help them that's permanent. It's not there. The best it can do is just touch your nature through emotion. You think white folks don't know about church, the Bible? Didn't they write it? I think they wrote it. Now, even with them writing it, look what they have built. Look, white people do, do not stop black people from doing things today. They don't stop you. The reason why they don't, because they already know that they can control what you do if God's not with you. We're making biodiesel. Just to go, we got to go to him to get a certain element to put in it. We will go to him to get it. They call the government. And here comes the FBI to asking us, oh, what are you getting this for? We have evidence that you purchased so and so and so. So then we showed him what we're doing. He said, oh, that's wonderful. Now, what I'm saying is, nothing gets past the man. So if you're going to do something that is right with what you're going to him and asking for, he will let you have it. But if you're going to use it to try to force your way into his society or force him to change his society, you can forget that. Whatever power you have to use as a force, he got to give it to you. Now, when the winds came and the rain came, he said, look, I don't have no power over that. Let's go. I can only tell you where I think it's going to make its track. Go to higher grounds of, let's go over here and let it have its way. Let's pray that it don't do too much damage. You understand what I'm, what's being shared with you? Well, it is a, it's a crying shame. That the preachers don't see this. It's a crying shame that Lewis don't see this. However, the enemy of us all most certainly see it. Because he's a God of what's happening. It's like if you're a man of your home, you know what comes in and what goes out. If you're a man of it. And if you're just a male of it, the wife, or wife, daughter, whatever, they bring in all kinds of stuff you don't even know. Buy a great big fat pocketbook before you know it, you don't have a man in there and bring him in. You don't even see it. Of course, that was exaggerated. However, that's what I'm saying. If you're a man, don't nothing come in your house, brother. You know it. Nothing. Not even the mail. When it comes in, you check it. Oh, 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 oh okay. You see? So this man knows. That's why he's not in here. You know, I represent his end. You know, we have people like uh, Malik Zulu Shabazz after the other brother passed. Khalid, leader of the Black Panthers. What the heck you gonna do with the, with the white man with, with you know with a few guns? What are you going to do with that? You're comparing what? Your will against his? You're going to go to his gun shop and get the guns, go to his place, get the bullets, and then go to a place that he allowed you to live in, that you pay a rent or even a mortgage, that he can take a glass and look through three hours and look at you, be 10 miles away and listen to everything you say. How are you going to plan against something like that? Well, turn it around. Here's a God that know everything he's doing and know it before he does it and he can't hide it we can tune in on him he can't tune in on us you see 
In other words, comparing now, do you see the implication of this? He can stop you because there ain't nothing you can do without letting him know what you're going to do before you do it. So we can do the same thing with him. Right? Now, you will never know it until you submit. And believe me, what's in line now for the black man, period, is a whipping. You may think white folks are whipping, boy, it's just hard out here. I mean, it's terrible. It ain't terrible. Not yet. It's one thing to have this man against you. It's another for the supreme being to have his finger against you. You know, to give you an example, if an unruly child comes to your home, but he's not yours, and you uh, let him know you have to do thus and so or else, you have to leave. And he refused to leave and he refused to change. So you may give him a spanking, but there's something always in your mind, in your subconscious and conscious mind, this is not really mine. I may not have the authority to do that. However, he's forcing me. This is the way white folks are with you. Now, when I say you, I'm talking about the ones that's really with me. If you ain't with me, you is. Now you take your own child and they being unruly and whatnot, and you have to end up spanking them. The whole, it's a whole different aura. The feeling comes across you, you have the authority to do this. Well, if they had to close the book at the 15th thousand year, because the real God was showing up to collect his own. And it reads in the scripture that I came together the 144,000. I came together the elite. I came together the remnants. Because my people lose their life for the lack of knowledge. Mine. So those of mine that listen or submit and don't lose their life, I have the right to take them. Now, those of you that will not turn, you still belong to me by nature. And just for that fact alone, a nullifies your right to ignore me. You have the right to do that. I hope all you all that are listening are, 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 is really getting the message, the understanding of this. And this should be played in every church. You know, there was something that um, has been on my mind for some time about these church people, especially if they're in a position of influence, pastors, deacons, head of the choir, ushers, you know, it's got, it's got some kind of a position in church. How many of you have, when you look at them, is something that don't look right? If it's a man, he looked too, he looked too soft. If he speaks, he don't speak with authority. He's too humble. Until you ask him something. And they never answer nothing you ask. The answer that they give you is not an answer. You can't do nothing with it. Anybody experience that? Well, that will let you know something is out of order. If I'm seeing it, if you don't see it, I see it. It's not that they're not good people. However, to me, it reminds me of a horse or a dog that's real powerful and vicious, but he's been whipped by the owner so bad, now he has no viciousness left, but he's still a dog. The poor lion, he's leaping through the hoop of fire. All the lion and authority is gone, but he's still a lion. That's something sickening to look at at this day and time. And then when you do see the black man showing any type of authority, he's crazy. To a degree. 
He'd go kill his brother, cut him, stab him, shoot him, run over him, because he's bad. But he won't go do that to white folk. He ain't that bad. You see how backwards everything is? So this is the world that I've stepped in. Not that you're going to influence me not to carry out what I come here to carry out. That's not going to happen. I'm going to do this and live. You can be with me and live, or you can be against me and die. And the thing of it is, how are you going to die? How will I permit it? Outright death? No, that's too good for you. You need to think about this. And I'm not just talking to the ones that's here. Everyone that's on the, this hookup. You should be taping this. Death comes in many different forms. Just for the mere fact that a few people that showed up lets me know everybody that did the, got the invitation, they're dead here. They're dead. And what good is it to be with God and you're dead truthfully? You're truly dead. It's no better than you laying in the hospital or vegetable. They're feeding you through intervening speeding. Both of you doing nothing. If you're going to get a job, you're working on a job, you're helping the enemy to be strong against you. That's a job helping him. You ain't helping yourself. That was all right in my absence. I'm not absent anymore. I'm here live and living. And I'm providing for you a way out. It's something for you to develop. Not for me. I will guide you in this. However, if you don't want it, my duty is to make sure that the earth is cleansed. It's already written. I think it was I, John, was talking. He said, he looked and he seen 144,000 going to heaven with their Lord. Why did he have to go someplace? Why didn't he just say he looked and seen 144,000 with their Lord? You see? So it means something's going to happen here. That the ones that was being saved have to leave and go someplace. But we don't think of that. We think Jesus is going to float out of the sky and save something. He couldn't even save himself. Well, Royal, are you upset? Not really. Just a wee bit disappointed. Maybe within the next three weeks, since you all didn't come and see me, I'll see if you leave again. The gulf answers me. Yes, it does. I have a few here. I do like the last time. They'll call and follow what you do. I said, go so and so and so. Yes, sir, father, we're gone. If I have the right and I have the power to do that, why not? It looks like I'm going to have to start doing it anyhow before you all start believing. And you got to have something to believe before you get into knowing. You know, your mother and father and all, everybody around you, you're just born, and everybody's calling you Fred. You know, in the beginning, you might say, who, who are they talking to? You know, who is Fred? And it's always directed after you, directed right to you, directed right to you, and after that, you start, oh, I must be Fred. And it keeps doing that, then you say, oh, I know I'm Fred. I hope this is understood. It's a dangerous thing to be on the opposite side of the Creator. It's dangerous to be on anybody's side that is in, against them if they're independent. That's dangerous. Especially if you need their help. It'd be something different if I need you all's help. I came to help you. And to show you that I came to help you, it's not enough for you all to go back there and look at the table that's here from Mobile to put 
purchase enough things that we've already made to bring about enough capital to pay for that high gas expense to get there in just a seat. To pay for the hotel room I stayed in. So it's got to be that I come to give you. But we don't seem to see that. We think if it didn't serve, you know, T.D. Jakes, Fleth Low Dollar, you know, somebody that's big, ain't nothing to it. And with all of their hugeness, how does it help you? How does it help anybody? You see? Now, since we are already in the message, we sent to everyone to let them know. When Allah does show up, he will be using modern equipment. Even if the idea came from you, the man that made you had to give it to white man. You know, you could even patent it. Then sell him and then get royalties from it. But the one that developed it is him. So you're using modern equipment. I'm using modern equipment. So we have a website that you can go and view what we're doing and why. That's modern equipment. Now, once you learn and start to see the value of what we're doing through this modern equipment, then perhaps maybe I can start using some of my equipment. Is this making any sense? You know, if God is going to be, if, if God is going to be a different God from the God that already exists, He cannot continue using what's already here from the other God. He would have to use what was created, not from a God that used that used what was created. So to get to that point, you know, this language that we speak is a bastard language. It is a language that's last on the list of languages that's accepted by me. It's a language that's specifically designed to promote negative, to support it. That's why you can use one word and it means many things. Just how you pronounce it. Just how you use it with your body structure. It can mean another thing. You can say like, hey, yeah, I love you. I love you. You like that one? So you see? They're the same word. So what it causes one to do that uses this language, it always sets up a perfect scenario for argument. Well, that's the way you perceive it. That's your perception. That's your opinion. That's what you believe. Never no definite. You see? So the language was produced expressly for the man of sin to make sure he bring all of his nature to sin of. So when he talked to you, you will start to see things the way he projects it to you. Then if you try to pin him up in the corner and say, you know you told me wrong, he said, that's the way you perceived it. I mean, I didn't really mean it that way. It really meant, I, you know, I don't know how you missed it. You see? So God's got to come. Because you cannot get out of this without me. It's impossible. So I say again, those of you, those of you that did come, you're very fortunate. If you make another move after this, you go to the modern equipment, check this out. Not me. Check out what I'm causing to happen. It's almost impossible for you to check me out. Matter of fact, that's one of the biggest hindrance in passing the flyers out. And those of you that do read and can read, you know, a law, royal, a law, and what? Oh. Why? You can't get past that there is someone that is God and he's a black man. And because he's letting you know who it is, you never say, well, look, how is that so? I mean, how can this really be true? They say, well, look, it's best that you come and question a man right to his face. Ask him. Okay, I'll be there. 
So I show up looking for you. Where are they? Now, if you had on there, Joe Bro, good brother, please be back. You see, this lets you know all you ones that think that you know God, when something is prayed that when you see it, right away you freeze in your track. You are afraid to challenge it. So if you really had any righteousness in you, if you love for me what you love for yourself, if it's true, you would come and say, listen, brother, you're a good brother from what I see, what I heard. However, what you're letting people know, here's the error in it. So and so and so and so and so. Have I made myself clear? Yes, sir, you made yourself clear. You made yourself clear. Now let's clear up the scenario. And we die now. I don't even read in scripture. Didn't white folks put it in scripture? You know, I'll walk with you. I'll talk with you. I will sup with you. You will be my people and I'll be your God. It, it, isn't that all me, Ricky? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I know goodness why you're not looking for no man to come back off the cross. It would make me a little bit nervous. If he couldn't save himself, now he's coming back with me, I'd be a little nervous about that. Because they come against him again, I might have to go with him. This only requires thought. Mathematical thinking. So this is already put in scriptures and the prophets has already delivered it. At the end of time, God himself would come. And if he did not come, he would smite the earth with a curse. Well, let's look at it. The earth was already smited mildly because the man is here, no clean water, no clean air, no good food, even though he tell you the food is good, now they tell you, don't even go to the health food store, because half of that ain't no good. So tell me it ain't mildly smited. You see, so when I come, we start making our own bread. We grow, grow our own wheat. We start producing the things that is good, because we're we doing it. We don't go to him and buy it. We're doing it. It's on a small scale, because nobody that's black wants to work. We'd rather stand on the street corners, the pavement that you didn't make, and the shoes that you didn't make, the loose baggy clothes that you didn't make, and sell dope that you didn't make. So then you say, well, let's go to the health food store. The man tell you, that ain't no health food store. So the earth is already mildly smited. But when we say a word, we mean it to its fullness. At least I smite the earth with a curse. This is like an unto smiting a field of corn. With bugs and locusts. You can't even set it a fire and save it. When they come in, you can't move fast enough for it. It's gone. Does it not, Brother Minister, read in there where there are even the bees were commissioned to sting them in their forehead for five months? Yes, sir. Don't kill them, but sting them rascals. Who do you think they're talking about? White folk? We don't have to sting them because they're not going to change. They just say, oh, I got stung. <laughs> Let's see if we can find an antidote for this. Uh, you need to start thinking, I'm telling you. Now, where we are, we're developing housing. It's at a slow pace now because we know you're going to come when the spanking comes. You're going you're gonna to remember this. It was like you had this real weird dream last night. And you get up, you feel funny, but you can't remember it. I mean, something must have really happened. What, what the place? Then the day goes on, you forget it. Then you're sitting up looking at something on TV, you on the radio, and say, oh, it pops back in your mind. Man, I gotta tell somebody this. You gonna remember this. So when the spanking comes, and it's not gonna come where we make an announcing. Today, 
I'll be here with the spanking. Ain't happen that way. Things are gonna get worse. You know, you should look to the right and see just a little answer. You ain't gonna see it. You look to the left, you don't see nothing. You look in front of you, oh, it's miserable. You don't even want to look that way. You turn all the way around. You look at everybody behind you, you can see where you look at. Scared to death. The things that took place and that is taking place in foreign lands is coming here. The tsunami, the recent tsunami that took place. Don't think that we, you know, this is, we're immune from that. As soon as I stop this, and I'm talking to more than you all that just sitting here, all over the country is tuned in to hear this. As soon as I stop doing this, look out. But the, you all that don't listen and don't keep up, know how, not going to know. As soon as I stop going around speaking, being insulted, as soon as I stop that, look out. I hope this is being understood. It would be a different thing if I was just talking. It would be different. You could say, oh, yeah, poor, poor, poor fellow. You think he's God. Well, let's look at it. How many royals do you know that spell with two L's? R-O-Y, A-L-L. How many? How many brothers or sisters that you know speaks like this? How many do you know? How many brothers, sisters, organizations, or whatever, besides white folks, is doing what I'm doing? Some of y'all going to say, I don't know, because I don't know what you're doing. That's the part that's insulting. I got a system already set up, not setting it up. It's already set up to be magnified, for surely Allah, thou are praised and magnified in thy midst. I mean, I'm letting you miss it. I'm magnifying myself. I have to offer to you everything that you need. And then when you get what you need, if you got good sense, you'll start developing some of the things you want. Hope this is understood. So I'm doing my duty. Meaning, I'm keeping my word. I'm keeping my word. After the 430th year of being enslaved by the slave master, I promised that I would come. And I would bring you out from his society. Bring you out of his thinking. Bring you out of the scenario he put you in. With great substance. If I got nobody to give it to you, I mean, I don't want all of it. It was like Oprah. Billionaire. She don't know what the heck to do with it, so she buy everybody a car. She got more than she got brains to use it. So it would be the same thing with me. I didn't say I come here for the earth because I want it all for me. No, 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 no. I come here to make sure the earth is vindicated and liberated from the wrong that's being done to it. From a man that we made to be wrong naturally. It has to be cleaned up and given to the righteous man. Not me. This makes sense. Well, that's what's taking place. So, in effect, I do not deserve the disrespect that's casted at me because I appear to be different from the God that you know. Because the God that you know, time is up to be God. It's like the time is up for night. You may say, well, why don't you say time is up for day? Because night don't run day away. Light runs darkness away. And the only reason why you had the darkness is because the light left. Is that, if that's understandable. Well, maybe I've talked too long, what not. Uh, is there, 
and you won't have any questions of me. And don't let what you heard frighten you. I'm not going to read your mind. I'm not going to jump on you. None of those things. Whatever you have in your mind that you would like to have an understanding of whatever it is, ask it. I'm expressing to you now what I'm doing and what I'm going to do. And one of the things what I'm going to do is thank you. Now, you have the power to stop it if you use it. If you don't use it, you're not going to make me a liar. I'm going to thank you. And I'm telling you right now, you're not going to like it. If you liked it, I wouldn't do it. I mean, I need to say that because, you know, using this language, you may think you perceive it another way. So, if we do have any questions, I think we have a mic. Um, the brother give you a mic, ask me the questions, and then we'll go for it. And if you think, well, the brother sounds good, he talks good, however, I just can't believe. I just don't believe. You know, it's like, Tina Turner, what's love got to do with it? What's belief got to do with it? Just for the mere fact that you believe, and you don't know. You don't believe your name is what it is. You know, if I know you, listen to the word, if I know you, I know how to call your name, and you will answer. But if I believe you, you might not answer because I mean, you messed up and got the wrong name. That makes sense? So we're talking about belief and no. So, anybody curious? Are you still basking and uh, marinating in what uh, you just heard? I mean, I understand. Because this is the time. And if you want to have any kind of thought that will assimilate you with me and my thought that I'm sharing with you, put yourself in this place. And ask yourself, would you do the same as what you just heard if you were God? If you were Allah, would you do this? What would you do if you keep calling your family to the table to eat? However, they stay in the living room looking at TV, starving to death. You, now you, you married, she's supposed to do the cooking. You got three children. One is a daughter, she's supposed to help cook. But your wife, your son, your daughter, all in the living room looking at TV. You come in, you pick, prepare the food, cook it, put it on the table. But you look in the room, you feel heartbroken. Because they're wasting away. Looking at the TV, playing the games. Your wife used to weigh 150, now she's down to 98. So you're almost ashamed to be seen with her. Because people be saying, you know, you're, you're not feeding her. But the food is there. Every meal is there. Delicious food. But they won't come and eat it. So what do you think happens after a while? The food is no longer prepared. If it is, it's just enough for he that's prepared it and that's going to eat it. Then we are done at the last breath. Do you see anything to eat? No, I didn't prepare anything other than for me. Well, can I have something to eat? Yes, go get it. I feel a little too weak. Well, I'm sorry about that. Maybe it's best you just check on out. But if I fatten you up, you're going to go right back and do the same thing again. You know? It's like a brother on the internet was saying about me, Royal, call himself God, he's crazy. If he's God, tell him to give me the six numbers. So I can hit the number. I can get the lottery. If he do that, he got me. I'll be a true believer. <laughs> What make him think I can't do come up with the six numbers? And what would make him think if I gave it to him 
that would cause him to be a real good devoted, I guess you say follower. Well, he couldn't be me because I don't have followers. You know, that's a nuisance. But what would make him think? He get the number. He don't know me in the beginning, so I give him the number. He hit. You think I'll ever see him again? Even if I sent word to him, he had his phone all tapped up. Everything's where I can't even call it. Change his number and everything. I mean, you know, he's gone. And I've had people to do that. They say, well, Father, I need so-and-so and so-and-so. And they paint, paint this picture, and I'm looking at it. I said, well, I'm going to do this as an example. He the brother out of all kind of trouble, like the Satan sending him before a whole audience of people. He need his rent paid, his wife's in the hospital, he got bad toes, he got asthma, he's all messed up. So, okay, well, here you go right now. Go see the secretary, get the money, pay your rent, so whatever. Oh, thank you, Father. Fall on his knees, want to kiss him. I said, but, but don't do that. Stop that, dear. Right? Just... Then you will come back. Oh, yes, sir, I'll be ever, ever indebted to you. I'll, one of your strongest believers and one of your strongest followers. No, just be with me. Yes, sir, I'll be with you. Ain't seen him no more. I heard he was doing well. Health was good. But you see, he asked me this. I did it just to make a point. So I made a healthy devil to stay away from me. When he got sick and everything he heard about, he came. Now he's well. And he got his rent paid. And got $150 in his pocket, which is really nothing, but to him it was a lot. Enough never to come back. At the moment, he was kissing the feet. Same thing with you all. When you see the flyers, look on it, the flyer itself is very attractive. Meaning that thought had to be put into it. But you all don't, you don't respond to right th thought, right thing. You don't respond to that. If you had a, a picture of a donkey kicking over a bucket or something, he said, oh man, this is cool. Because there ain't no thought put in it. So you can relate to that. But if it's thought placed there, then it means this is something that's valuable. I don't consider myself to be valuable, so I, I don't think I will uh, associate myself with that. I may feel embarrassed. Does it make sense? Well, before I started placing myself before the public, I had some very important visitors. The scientists that we learned that writes the history 25,000 years in advance, I had a few of them come and visit me. You know, I, I'm not in the dream. Just like you see me, they came to me. They told me quite a few things and carried me quite a few places. Quite a few. And one of the first things they said to me, now, before this starts, we're letting you know now, you're going to have a lot of questions. You listen? You're going to have a lot of questions. It wasn't in a way where I started asking the question, then they told me, well, you were asking too many questions. Why don't you just listen? Before we got started, they said, now before we get started, we're telling you now, you're going to have a lot of questions. Do you all have any? I had a lot of questions. You got one? Bring your mic to him. Uh, Bible. This was a question that um, this in the Bible about about this. Um, it was a man that God gave power to to curse a person or you know bless a person. In the Bible, this man was want want this person to go and 
curse the crowd of Israel. And he offered him all kind of money. And he thought about it. Wait a minute, let me go talk to God first. And he went and talked to God. And God told him, said, no, he said, I'm not, I'm not going to bless them. I'm not going to curse the crowd of Israel. So I made sure that they'd be blessed. So we cannot cut the crowd of Israel. So he went back and told the king. He said, no, I can't cut. He said, I'm going to give you, let me give you some more money. So he, he may offer him more money. So he said, wait a minute, let me go talk to God one more time. He went back. So God told him, said, did I tell you I was not going to bless you know, I'm not going to curse the crowd of Israel. He said, no, you cannot curse the crowd of Israel. So he went back. And the man brought, two other guys got brought more money to him. He said, wait a minute, I'm going back. I'm going to go back. He had gone one more time. He went back. And God told him, said, didn't I tell you I can't curse the crowd of Israel? He said, I'll tell you what. Do what you want to do. But I had told you you can't do it. So he left. He went back and told the guys, come on, let's go. When he got there, he didn't curse the crowd of Israel. He blessed them. And the man said, why are you? You probably didn't curse them. He said, I'm blessing them with, with all the women. So it's going to be up to them. Could you all make him like what he was saying? Did, Did you say the cry of Israel? The, the cry of Israel. A tribe. Right. Oh, oh, okay. So he went three times to get permission to curse them. Right. So God told him, after God told him, well, you go and do what you want to do. Right. So what it turned out really, what he really wanted to do was bless him. Right. But right. the person he took with him, he wanted to curse him. So he was going to curse him. Right. So he asked him, well, why did you bless him instead of curse him? Right. So he reflected back to them what God told him to do, do what he wanted to do. Right. So, he, I mean, that's a good story, but is the question here? Uh, yes, sir. So what did it really mean? Because you know, that's in the Bible. Uh, oh, what does it really mean? Right. You know, it, uh, right. Well, first we got to know what the tribe of Israel is. Right. Israel. And it is not white folk. Right. It's you. Yes, sir. In other words, the ones that came under Elijah, the 144,000, all of them are black. All ALL. Black. And the, they can be looked at as a tribe. 144,000 is a tribe of real people. The real people. So, like I said, this is being done in the English language. So it allows you to already accept your enemy as being just as real the, uh, as you to be real. He ain't real. Right. He's mankind. So he put it in there in such a way where it will bring you confusion until God Himself shows up and explains to you the absolute understanding of this. So this hundred forty-four thousand or the ones that are with me is the real Israel. Yes, sir. If you understand what I'm saying. Yes, sir. So that's what that really means. So now, everybody else, all of the preachers, your parents, everybody else has told you, look, curse them Muslims. To hell with them. Leave them alone. If you go and be with them, I'm putting you out. Just Christians. You see? Every day, that's been, and ever since Elijah stood up and started being the messenger, that's the kind of curse that we've had. Now, it's gotten to such degree when Mr. Farrakhan or Lewis Farrakhan come on the scene, in the beginning he was right on it. After that, he started being Lewis, and he put such a nasty taste in everybody's mouth, so when God actually shows up himself, I'm cursed also. Just by coming to a place and you see it. Websites on it. Phone numbers on it. Everything free is on it. Admission to come and see and ask them free. Because it's a royal, a lying person. Well, I curse him. I shall not show up. However, I'll tell the representative, I'll be there. So when you call me, I'm not going to be there. So we'll see who has the most lasting effect. If just, you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, wouldn't that seem just... If, I, if I'm continually calling you, and I'm not just calling you from the tongue, I'm calling you from a relief of what society is putting on you. I got the relief right there, and the relief should be calling you. However, because you can point to a man that is developing it, you shun it. God is not a man. I don't want nothing to do with that. We are going to be cursed. You are already cursed. 
Yes, sir. Oh, you on the mic? Yes. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. How you doing, Father? I'm doing well. That's good. Uh, I wanted to ask you, uh, I know the time is very serious, and uh, I wanted to say, like, if uh, uh, a righteous had a hard time, you know, going on the master class, and uh, uh, and uh, and ended up getting to be too late. Uh, how um, how could he uh, fit in? Uh, see if I understand what you're saying. If you're going on a master cleanse, uh, if a righteous wanted to go on a master cleanse, and uh, he had a hard time doing it. Uh, like getting balanced. Getting balanced? Yes, sir. <laughs> you mean balanced from the cleansing or balanced because you want to wipe? Right, to wipe. Oh, and you're having a hard time doing that? Yes, sir. And the question is, uh, what, how do you make it easier or something? Um, uh, how would he fit in if it was too late? Or if it was too late? Yes, sir. And we had to go and we didn't have no wipe? Right. Oh, well, you fit right in. Yes, sir. Because going to be quite a few sisters going there don't have no husband. Yes, sir. So they've been looking like, man, this boy, the field has gotten real slim. <laughs> well, I ain't got too many brothers to pick from. I better get her and get him. Yes, sir. Uh, you, you don't have no trouble, then, if it gets to be that late. Yes, sir. So now, if you ask asking what can you do in the immediate time now, and you're on the master cleanse. If you actually, you're talking about the real cleansing of the body? Yes, sir. And you're preparing, preparing yourself to be clean when you, when you uh, have a wife? Oh, uh, yes, sir. All right, well, there's nothing wrong with that. In the course of doing it, keeping your mind all the time, while you're doing it, if you're doing it, to make sure you're clean. So whatever woman be with you, she has a clean man. You keep that thought in mind. At the same time, make sure that you're looking. If you're going to say a prayer, or whatever it is, if you're going to put it out there to say, Allah, I want my wife. You know, and I would be looking for it. So I'm looking for you to send it. Yes, sir. I did the same thing. Yes, sir. Yeah, I did. Yes, sir. <laughs> I did. Yes, sir. You know, you know I said to myself, hey, I'm, I got to clean myself up. Because I'd already been with these, showed me all these things, and asked all these questions to, but I didn't have nobody. Mine was gone. Oh, Roy, oh, you are crazy. I'm leaving you. Really? Yes. Goodbye. Yes, sir. Because what person can compete with that kind of an experience? If I'm told and shown just about everything in the universe, not just this planet, yes, sir. and gave a little knowledge of it all, what is it that you can come and offer me to abandon that? My children? Well, I will take your children. Get to step in. Yes, sir. You see? Now, yes, sir. however, since the man is supposed to be balanced, well, where is mine? That one left. Now, I didn't ask, I want a wife. I didn't ask that. I said, I wanted mine. So when she came, it would be mine. Not somebody I got really belonged to somebody else. She just hadn't met him yet, so I stared her while she was looking. You see? So I asked for mine. So when she came, I didn't have to worry about nobody else being attracted to her more than me when she would leave. She's mine. You see? So she came. I ain't got rid of her yet. I mean, she's still with me. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. In other words, I'm telling you how to talk to yourself because a lot, I already know what you want. Yes, sir. I do. And you know, I said, well, God, man. Yes. Why should you have all the fun? Yes, sir. You see? Yes, yes, I'm married. Thank you, brother. I want to have somebody that is from me, yes, sir. That I can put on my planet. And while I'm raising him to his potential and his thinking and creativity, he can, after a while, go and make one of his own planets and invite me to his home. You see, I want that. And I shall not be denied. I'm going to have it. In order to have that, that means somebody got to have a son for me, and I'm not going no pesto whammo, and there he is. Yes, sir. No, I'm going to let it bring through just the way we set it up for now. I am going to change it. Yes, sir. But for right now, the level of awareness 
where everybody is at. We won't permit me to do that, but I'll be too far advanced above you. Now you start being afraid. I don't want you afraid of me. We're supposed to walk together, talk together, sup together. You know, I'll be your God, you be my people. I mean, hey. If I do something like that, you're going to say, uh, um, yeah, I'll call you God, you know, you, I'll be over here. <laughs> It might be comical, but it's true. Okay? Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Going, 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 going. That boy was moving, wasn't he? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Um, I saw the link. Well, let me hold it up. Yes, sir. Um, I have several questions, and, you know, Take your time. Um, um, I've heard it shared that. Um, oh gosh. Let me start with the one that's really important to me. <laughs> <laughs> what is the purpose of the spider, and why am I so afraid of them, and why are they so attracted to me? Did you ask me that before? You never had? Well, maybe in the unseen. Oh, maybe that's where I picked <laughs> it up. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Well, the importance of, of the spider shows time. In other words, it can take something and camouflage it to make it look like time has been uh, added to it or time has evolved when it only looks that way. And then it, it, uh, uh, the spider captures things that are small, that really it, they're big enough to make a spot. But it's almost like they're not really big enough for you to come up with something to control them. You know, like mosquitoes and flies and little things. They don't really come to capture you. If you in the, in the demonia, if you eat wrong and they get a certain sin, they may come and bite you. If they feel, you know, threatened about you. But they're used more or less like to offset things. It makes it look, you know, you may have just cleaned something and you leave and come back as a whip. Now, if it's there for a little while, the web starts collecting dust. But you know, this room is filled up with dust. The web starts collecting it. It may not take no more than a day or so. When you go look at it, it looks like, man, this place has been vacant for years. So it has something to do with perception of time. If you understand what I'm saying. And by then, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, okay. Let's say this. If you came here today, see me and your hair was all over your head look like you hadn't you know lit back then and everything i would think man it must have took four or five days to get it like that and maybe you might have just fell on that side fell on the floor and got it you know it just happened however the initial appearance of it looked like it took time to do that you, you know what i'm saying yes, that's the same way what the spider does the effects of what he does, it, it deals with time. It makes it look like something that happened a long time. But in, in, in fact, it, it, it don't necessarily have to be that way. You, you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. You all understand this? Yes, sir. So, they deal that way. However, they take care of all the little things. You know, white folks have to go make raid. You know, bug killers. We got the natural killer. He sets it up, captures it, and eats it. So we don't have to worry about it. So they'll set up a web in the corner of your house just to fly. It's just that this world is so wicked, they don't want to fly. The spider ain't enough spiders. Now, why are you afraid of them? I don't know. Maybe you have some type of allergy. Or you have something that uh, maybe your blood needs to be changed or whatever it is, or you're not eating right. Or... There's always something that we're not doing to ourselves that we're liking that comes up with those kinds of things. I had a daughter, she was terrified of stepping in the grass barefooted. She just had fits. We just had to, if we went some place where the grass had to literally pick her up and carry her across the grass. Grass is wonderful to step on. Nice cushiony. Mm -hmm. But with her, she had a fit. So she had a deficiency. 
So we had to start correcting that deficiency in the fear of grass walking under there. You've got to remember the people that raised you. I can't even say raised. The people that has been in control of you is the enemy of you. So they're not going to give you things that make you develop as you should. We are so strong physically, it takes a lot of wrong that he's doing to actually take us out. Especially when you don't know he's doing it. You can go buy a, a, you know, a, 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 a box of cereal. That's a box of death. Coupled with the cigarettes, the cigars, the cognac, the late nights. All oh, that's against you. You know, and the bacon, the eggs, the grease. All oh, that's against you. So it's going to make something go like it. And you want to win. I'm, st- I'm terrified of spiders. You want to know if something is wrong if you can't justify it. Then it's you. You, you, you got some kind of deficiency. Yes, sir. All right? Yes, sir. Thank you. I had a, two more questions. I had two more questions. Go ahead. Um, the, the next one is, um, as a sister, I, I, as a sister, I, I strongly believe, I believe that you are Allah. Am I able to know that? Well, not in, yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, ma'am. You'll be able to know it. It may take a little, a little while. However, this is the way it is described concerning the sister or the female. The ones that actually somewhat know that I am the supreme being. It's described in the literature that you all are the true believers. True believers. However, we will translate into that into, yes, you can know. You can know. You can never be God. But you guys know who God is. And you can be a goddess to him. Yes, so the book says, you know, and then when the book was written, it was done at a such a time when they didn't know God. They just knew that you couldn't be one. And if you were really with him, they said, now, you are a true believer. Then you have believer. Then you have non-believer. Disbeliever. <laughs> but you're the true believer. Yes, sir. All right. And my last question um, is, you shared earlier that um, currently you're using this God's equipment and you're going to be using your own equipment. What's an example of this equipment that you speak of? Have you heard of uh, telepathic, com- uh, you know, communication? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's just one of them. You know, to let you know that the God that you are uh, operating under and with is very limited. You gotta have a phone. And these phones, and them hell phones don't work half the time. The most important part of the conversation is drop. Now, if I'm gonna employ what I do, use my own, it ain't gonna drop. And they let you know, you ever had a vision? You had one? Yes, don't it always start off, maybe you're doing something else, looking at TV or talking to somebody, and what you're doing kind of fades out. Then this comes in. Bam. So, 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 you see it, and when it's finished, it fades out, and you come right back into doing what it's, and you say, man, I just had a vision. What you think about that? <laughs> Otherwise, I'm playing, but however, that's part of it. Other words, when we communicate, you know, it ain't going to cut off, and you rap when to forget it. Every person that has a vision, you will remember it. You will have trouble remembering a dream. That's because we allow you to be a part of it. And since you have crazy, you can't have to remember it. But when we don't, when we want to make sure you're not going to forget it, we don't want you to forget it, we let you have no dream. We send you a vision, bam, right in your face. And we make sure that you walk. You ain't sleep, you ain't in your sleep world. When you're in between sleeping and you you walk. Now, when you, the other thing when you walk and drift off, they say you daydream. You're still dreaming. That's not a vision. If that answers your question. Otherwise, that's how definite the communication.
communication will be just one thing. But there's many other things. And so many things that I would like to share. The enemy also would like to hear. If you understand what I'm saying. Yes, sir. I shared that that was the last question, however. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, the, um, the pyramids, the location of the, the location of the pyramids and their significance, would you share that? Well, most of the pyramids that, that is visible to man is out in the desert. Yes, this is to show the man that exists here now that's running or ruling the world that there is a knowledge greater than what he's come up with. Here's something that's erected in the desert where the desert is not supposed to have no life. But this is something that intelligence has erected something in a dead place that supersedes everything that he has done. Even going out in space, he still had the knowledge to build that pyramid. We want to remove it. So it's like, well, to let you know that I'm telling the truth, at the end of time I will come, I'm going to leave a sign here to let you know. There's a higher form of intelligence that you will ever, never reach. So that should let you know, yes, this is true, what I'm telling you. At the end of time for you to rule, I shall be back. And I'm going to start to employ that kind of intelligence. And it does a few other things too. The level of thinking that's operating the planet is so low that the planet would self-destruct if it didn't have a relief valve. Right, like you have a pressure cooker here, you did any cooking? Yes, sir. You burn yourself, did you? No, sir. Well, you're not a good cook. <laughs> <laughs> you have the little thing on the pops up. Okay. Well, the same thing with the earth. It's a big ball of energy. And it's there for our use. And when you don't use it, something has got to happen to keep from it exploding. So the pyramids is built in such a way where it releases the power. And when it gets too overbearing, you look and they say, do you see the northern lights? That's energy that's coming up from the planet that's not being used. And then you see these volcanoes. This is energy. And when you see the lava come out and run all down and everything, that's not in the earth. Lava come up from in the earth. This is energy that's coming up through the whole world is or the weakest part is coming, and it's coming so rapidly, it's melting everything that's sitting there. It's not the, it's in there, it's just bubbling, then it bubbles out. No. It's down there bubbling, it stays there. But the energy that comes up, it comes through so fast, it's just like when you say radi uh, radiation. You see when they dropped the bomb on uh, 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 Japan? And when it went off, it just took the flesh right off the people just like that. They didn't have time to cry, ah, and it's gone. See, so that was so powerful that the flesh just evaporated. Well, the energy comes up through it so fast it melts it. All the material that is in the path of that energy it melts it and comes back as lava. <laughs> Only because, are you listening, man? Only because the thought process, knowing how to use the power that the earth produces, but since we made it, we were smart enough to put check valves. If you understand what I'm saying. Yes, sir. That answer? Yes, sir. A couple more? Yes, sir. You know? <laughs> uh, what time is it? You know, this is Mr. Bobo's place. We have to get out of it. It's what? 3.55. We got how many more minutes? 5.30. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Um, when it's shared um, about calling on Father in the Unseen, what, what does that mean and how do we do that? Genuine in your call. And genuine means from the essence of you. In other words, your call has to be for real. And it has to be where you can justify it. It's the same principle as, you know, uh, uh, you see this thing where something that's heavier than what you were able to lift, and it actually falls on your child or something of that nature, and you run almost at one end, pick it up and snatch your child out. You know, the genuine need to save the child automatically brings something up in you that we already placed there. It caused you to be able to do that. So the genuine need for you, me to actually answer your call has to be justified in his answer. It is justified. 
Now, you call him because you're lazy and want me to do it because you don't want to do it. He don't answer. You say, well, I call on Father, you don't answer. I mean, hey, you could have did it. You see what I'm saying? Yes, sir. If that answers your question. Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you. I have a lot of, I don't know, uh, I don't know if, uh, you know, I've seen this and there's a lot of people come to the mic and I go to different places. They come up and say, Father, I just love you. I was on the way so and so and so and so and so and so happened. I called on you and it took care of it. The police stopped me and I called on your father and everything turned out smooth. Because they were frightened. To them, it was genuine. Help! So, and they come and tell me this. But it wasn't where I showed up physically and did it. If you understand. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, Father. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Well, we have a couple more questions. Heavy ones. You know, like the Queen of England might ask me. Any others? And don't be ashamed. Well, yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Salam alaikum. Well, let me smile. Yes, sir. Um, I was wondering, how um, would a couple know that it's time to have a child, a plan for a child? How would you know when it's time to plan for yes, the child? <laughs> yes, sir. Anytime it's time to plan. Yes, sir. Then if you really going to have it or not, that's a different thing. Yes, sir. All right, I, I know what you're asking. Yes, sir. If both parties are in agreement that they want a child, and uh, you both realize that you're capable of having the child and rearing the child, it's time to have it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My next question um, is pertaining to the hereafter. He said that, you know, we won't be, um, in other words, there'll be no death. And I was wondering, do that mean we'll lay our bodies down or? Um, no, <laughs> in other words, how would that take place? In other words, if you go with me, a transition will take place. Like now, you, I'm bringing you from death to life. In the body that you are, meaning that I'm bringing you from a dead state of thinking into a live state of thinking. Now, and that's not the hereafter. That's pre preparing you for the hereafter. The actual hereafter, as we go into it, I will transform the body of the person. Like they read in the book, they, you know, they put already wrote in the book. You know, we're going to make you a new people. You know, we're going to take the people that's here and make you a new people. But we're not going to kill you and then make you new. We're not going to give you a, a different body and call that new. That's not making you new. That's giving you a new body or a different body. See? However, if you, this is why it, it reads, don't you read in the book, you know, there will be no more death. The, the same thing, you know, I'll be your people, you'll be mine. There will be no more sadness, no more crying, no more tears. You know, no more death. You will live forever because he has made all things new. So if I make all things new, well, then it remains new, and it also helps to keep you new. And the great thing about me and creation is always changing. It never leaves the essence of the laws of which it was put in. But it has so many different ways to magnify it. So if you're with me, by the time the change is made, you will have that body. I'll make it new. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, I always said that. Yes, sir, I always had that thought, however, I wasn't sure, you know, if that was absolute, so I was just checking my thinking to make sure it's definite. Good thinking, it's nice. Good. Yes, sir. Hurry up, we don't have much time. Oh, yes, sir. Uh... Uh, when I was at the mic asking you that question, uh, uh, brother, uh, I wanted to ask you how uh, how would you get the negative out of a person that's too late? Too late? Yes, sir. How will I get it out? Yes, sir. <laughs> well, if they're too late, uh, <clears throat> are you sure you're asking it right? Oh, uh, yes, sir. If it's uh, too late, that means they're gone. You mean, if you're saying if they go right to the last minute, what will I do to make sure that they make it? Uh, 
Because the way you ask it, you, you answer it yourself. Oh, uh, uh, um, like, like if they wanted to go on the master cleanse, and, uh, but it was too late for that person, uh, to go on the master cleanse, uh, and, uh. You know, it's never too late to go on the master cleanse. That, it's never too late to do that. The only thing you can do is overdo it, but it's never too late to go on it. The master cleanse, you know, it, it, it's, it's a process of cleaning, cleaning, uh, the physical body. So if you, uh, that's welcome at any time. So it's not like where if you say, well, we get ready to leave on the ship. And you just get ready to start the master cleanse. Don't worry about that. You start it today, this afternoon you leave, hey. When we get to the case, look, I'm on the master cleanse. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm being humorous. In other words, nothing, it, it already reads, let nothing or no one rob you of your reward. And your reward is to be with me. So don't let the master cleanse rob you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you very much. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Little, no, little, little brother. Let, I just want to wake him, Father. Well, it was on your man. Yes, sir. Uh, I would like to ask what are moles for? What are moons or moles? Moles. Moles? Like yes. I got? Yes, sir. Oh. Hmm, what are moles for? You going to remember this? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, I can. Usually, moles represent the same things as pyramids. Meaning that the person has a certain amount of knowledge that they are not using. Now, this is a spiritual answer. Not Mr. Bobo, not the white man's answer. So when these people have these moles, they're living beneath the level of life that they should be. And if they're forced to do that, the, the evidence of the knowledge that they have will start coming out on their body. I don't know. This is why, well, since more than you are listening at the answer, this is why it is described in the Hadith when they were describing what God looked like. They said God, that actually came, he had gaps between his teeth, big gaps, and moles on his face, and speaking a strange language. The strange language is truth. It scares people to death. That truth is strange. So you're looking at the person that's got the gap between his teeth. And I got the moles because I got so much knowledge. And I'm trying to hold it back so you all can come on up and kind of halfway catch me. But it's popping out on me. You ask the question, you know, uh, get the tape. Yes, sir. Ask your dad to explain it. Uh, it uh, or do you understand that? Yes, sir. Go ahead, soldier. Yes, sir. Thank you, Father. Yes, sir. You're welcome. Does that sound, sound like a jibber jab? Strange, isn't it? You know, they say, you're going to have a lot of questions. One of the questions was, uh, why is the blade of grass green? They just like you kind of laughing. They told me. Of course, I'm going to tell y'all. Yes, sir. You, you got uh, yes, sir, Father. You were speaking about the energy. I was looking at a program, and uh, the Caucasian was speaking about uh, what he called chi energy. It's uh, a, a life form energy. And they was explaining uh, how they summons it, the Caucasian, how they actually summons this energy, and they can knock people out with it. And I was really fun. First of all, is that, can they actually summon that energy as well? Yes, sir, some of them can. Okay. And um, what he was describing, and the other Caucasians as well that had that experience, it was more physical. Like they could actually feel it with their hands or something of that nature. If I wanted to know if that's the same energy, uh, which they refer to as a life force energy that is actually coming from the from the earth, or it's another energy uh, that they were speaking about. Yes, sir. It, it, it's an energy with 
implied intelligence being applied to it. And it's an energy that is not a righteous energy. You know, since we made Satan to be a man also, we gave then permission for them to be very intelligent and also to have energy for him. However, it's not an energy that is used by the righteous man. He won't even answer the righteous man because the righteous man won't call on it. The man that's unrighteous calls on it because he can't call on the righteous one. Okay, you know, don't no enemy call on righteous energy and they're answered. That don't happen. We don't answer them. Because if we did, it's like I got an opponent that I'm fighting in the ring and I send to him my best stakes. Fatten him up to beat me up. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. See? If you understand what I'm saying. Yes, sir, Father. Also, uh, speaking about the energy, I have uh, experienced a certain type of energy. And what the Caucasian was describing was physical. However, this energy that I, was, I experienced was where uh, at one point my body temperature could raise where it would be real hot. Come on. Oh, yes. Go ahead, your body temperature. My body temperature, I started off, uh, I don't know why I stopped. I, I was thinking and um, using thought. It was a form of energy that I felt throughout my body, mostly in my organs area. And uh, I could have raised the temperature up, and it didn't happen all the time, Father. However, what the Caucasian was describing, I was could relate to that in a, in a more spiritual way. So the difference that I've seen is that it was tangible to them. However, with myself, it wasn't tangible. I was like, you know, well, well I'll go with this from not, you know, from here. However, uh, what energy or form, or, I refer to as energy, that, that I, but I felt like someone was coming in and if I could have direct that, it would, uh, it appears that felt like I could have directed further. Other than uh, it's in the temperature. Do you, uh, have any children? Yes, sir. Uh, uh they still with you? Yes, sir. And, and, and your, your mother? Yes, 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 sir. Have you ever seen the child summons the mother, but it didn't make a sound? No, sir, father. I, you ever seen that? I, I, no, sir. Any of y'all ever witnessed it? Have your wife ever got up in the middle of, or got up sometimes and said, Oh, I gotta go check on the baby. I heard the baby. But yes, sir. Yes, sir. And maybe you went where and you looked and, and the baby is, is waiting like playing, but they, you can't say, Well, how did you she? She called her. Otherwise, she heard something that you didn't hear. And when you went to check, there was no evidence that the baby made a sound. But she said she heard it. Yes, sir. That's what you're talking about. In other words, that's controlled by an infant because it's innocent and natural. We are so polluted, you do it by haphazardly. So when you consciously do it every once in a while, you don't really have nowhere to, no place to direct it because everything you're doing is for Bobo. Yes, sir. You see? Yes, sir. So that's what happens. Yes, sir. <laughs> if you're, in other words, there are many things that take that, that, that we come across almost by accident. But then when you see it, it's like, what do I do with it? It's like, oh, but she got a billion dollars. What do I do with it? While she was getting it, she got condominiums, airplanes. So after you experience all of that, you still didn't experience God. So something is still lacking. Yes, sir. You see, now, if she knew the real God, she'd know exactly what to do with it. And she'd be so happy that God blessed her so she can bless somebody else. Meaningfully. Like I say, God blessed the person that has his own. The reason why that's a blessing because if you got it, 
That means you can be like God. You can also give. Then you can experience the feeling God feels when he gives. But if you ain't got it, you always got to receive. It's like, you know, that ain't a good feeling. Especially if you really need what you're asking for. And if you just asking just to be asking. Yes, sir. Thank you, Father. Yes, sir. And I'll let you know, what I'm doing today, and, and have been up until now, this is something the black man needs. As you begin to accept it, and see that the need is genuine, and it frees you. It don't lock you to me. It don't cause you to be loyal to me. It calls you, if you're going to be successful, you're going to use a formula. You know, like you go to school, or however you learn homeschool, whatnot, and you learn math. You learn the tables. You learn the tables. You didn't learn the teacher that taught you. Not necessarily learn him. Learn the tables. So when he's gone, or even when he's present, you work the tables. And it'll free you. And because it keeps you free, you might go to him and say, well, I, I, mean, I, I love you. I'm so happy you taught me that. <laughs> so this is what the black man needs. The black man needs a God that is for him. And the man... That is God has to have enough power to answer your call. That makes sense? If you call me, I'm going to be an answer. What needs to be being God? However, I set up a system for you. When you do call, you'll know when to call and what to call for. So I'll answer. You don't need you calling me and ringing the wrong number. And you're going to answer. My number is zero one uh, zero four one seven. You call you know one zero four seven. Wrong number, right? That's just a, the, the principle of what I'm saying. Are right, everybody sleepy? You ready to go? Those of you that came in a little bit late, the floor was open for you to ask, ask questions. Anything you'd like to know? Uh, since you weren't here when I started. Quite a few things were said that I think it would be very beneficial for you. So we're duplicating tapes. You can get the tape. However, if you have a question you'd like to ask, feel free. Because I won't, uh, yes, sir. I won't be here. This is like a one-shot deal for a while. I'm going to be gone. This, this dealing with, with the world today. Uh, yeah. About the mark of the boost. Do you believe that the mark of the beast is being taken place at this instant right now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Could, you, could you give me a little more uh, info on that? Well, the mark of the beast, first we have to know what, who the beast is. And that's the man that rules this planet, that rules the world. That's the Caucasian. His actions is that of a beast. Now, the mark of him is your thinking. You think just like him. So since you think like him, he has marked you. Now, in order for you to get out of that mark, God got to come and erase it. Otherwise, I have to offer to you something that's greater than what your mark have. For you to be willing to let go of the mark and receive another way of life. To receive freedom. However, yes, sir. The beast and, you know, our process of developing him and when he went into the hills and caves of Europe, he did a lot of things to try to get back to being black again. And in the process of doing that, he made himself almost three quarters beast. Yeah, three quarters. Yeah, one quarter of a human. And he'll tell you right away, I'll be a monkey's uncle. <laughs> See, so that's the beast. And he, because he acts that way. You know, he don't go, uh, he may say, well, we'll go and do it diplomatically. But what he's got behind him is a whole bunch of arrows. You know, the bird of prey, the eagle, you know, he's got to show you all his brain with, oh, he's got the arrows to stab you, to shoot you. But he got it behind him. So he show you one thing, however, with the intent of taking what he wants. And that's what beasts do. You see these animal shows, the lion runs down, the gazelle and all that, whatever. You just take him and eat him. 
That's what a beast does. But the elephant eats grass. He don't have to run the grass down. You see, but it's there. He eats the grass. He's I'm a person. I'm going to be a being. So he's not, he's considered a beast because of what he does, but his actions is not that of a beast. He don't take anything. He don't let you come take nothing from him unless you're wise in him so they have poachers because the poacher is the beast. The elephant, you know, if you want to deal with him on his level, you know, he don't let you do nothing to his children. And he don't come bother you. So, you walk around, you can't even hear him walk. So, so. You still want to accord with nature. So. So that's where we got to be. The black man is, in this language, a bad, bad man. In my language, he's God. However, he got to start doing it. Something else? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Father. I was wondering, though, as far as the um, the children or the members of the first, is there a particular duty that they have? The children yes. of the first, yes, sir. their particular duty is to learn. And uh, what I have going on, if they're with me, they learn theory and practicality. They have the whatever they're learning through theory. I have something in motion where they can go and actually put their hands on it or in it. So the learning and you know the best teacher is experience. You can sit up and I can teach and teach and teach. They don't have nothing to do with you learning. You sit here and listen, take a nap, wake up, is it time to go? I taught, but you didn't learn nothing. However, now if you're gonna learn what you know what what because this only happens for what two or three hours, maybe every six months. I come down and talk to you for two hours out of six months. Now, if you decide, well, I want to do something about what you are saying. I want to do something about what you are delivering. I want to do something with this knowledge you got. Okay, well, we have a place called heaven and centralized. Come here. Until we get something started here in Mobile. We're getting it started. I got one of my best men here. To get the, get the Adam rolling, you know, get it, start spinning. So we want to duplicate where we got it. So if you, if you're unable to wait until it's developed here, come where it's already developed. Bring your child. If you don't want to come yourself, send your child. So when we're teaching them in the university, as soon as they get out of the university, we've got a duty site for them. They can go and participate in what they learn. And then this way they learn like that. It's like they've got a clear, free mind that accepts truth because that's what it was designed to accept, and that's all they get. Full of truth. So when the people come, I don't care if it's the reverend or who it is. I don't care if it's an old man, young man. When they come to talk to one of the children that's with me, they say, man. If I only had that when I grew up. See? Remember, the knowledge and the wisdom comes out of the mouths of babes. It can't come out if I didn't put it there. Well, I said, once you were a babe, didn't the wisdom come out? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's been a while since I asked you a question. Yes, sir. Because I've heard a lot from you. And, but I have a question today that something I wondered about when I was growing up. What is it about the um, lightning bulb that enabled him to make the light? And the second part of it is could we utilize that knowledge and uh, do something beneficial to ourselves? Yes, sir. It only means that the, the, the bug is... Uh, usually everything that we see, we have a life form that lives it. You know, like you see the light. That's not alive. That's a, a fixture that's put up that will make light, but it is not alive. So to show the brilliancy of God Himself the, or the Creator, we make everything we make alive. You know, like I said about the spider, he catches the fly. That's life catching that rascal. The white man got to go make up something that's not alive to catch it. Yes, so the lightning bulb. His chemistry, how he's made, what not, when his, when his wings are closed, and he's calm and everything, well then, the light is off. But when he opens his wings and starts to fly, it's agitated, it's almost like the, you can do white folks sell these things, you shake it up and the light come on. Yes, sir. The same thing happens with that. He got the idea from us. Yes, sir. Now, what it really means is that there are many times that in the course of the 6,000 years that there have been quite a few men 
they came up with things that was very good for the advancement of man or mankind. Yes, sir. Now, when they come up with it, it's for a short period of time, and then it's, they lose it. That's like the lightning bolt. You see it, lights up, then it's gone. Yes, sir. So for a minute, you know, they say, who's that, who, uh, 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 what's his name? They're supposed to create the light or made the electrolyte. Thomas Edison? Edison, yes, sir. Well, if he really did that. Yes, sir. Yeah. For a moment here to, man, I got it. The light went off. After he didn't do that, making the, you know, get rich off, he don't think of nothing else. The light didn't stay on. Yes, sir. Other words, that's a sign of what, how this world got to be where it is now. Yes, Different people have a light for a few seconds. Yes, sir. And they develop it. Yes, you're supposed to be the light, not have it. Be the, the black man is God. You're supposed to be the light all the time. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. You know, and this is something that comes from outside of the, in, inside the earth. The lightning bug is not, he's not produced on the outside. He's produced on the inside. He comes outside. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That raises another question in my mind, too. You know, uh, they say in the city there would be no need for the sunlight, the moonlight. Right. That's right. Is that uh, synopsis of, is that similar to the lightning bulb? It's similar to that, yes, sir, but the light is much more pleasant. Yes, sir. And this is physical light. Physical light. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's in such a way where you can't really point to where it's coming from. Oh, okay. Damn. I've been intending to ask you this question for quite some time. Yes, sir. And uh, finally, thought I'd formulate it. All right. You, you get the answer? Yes, sir. You like it? Yes, sir. I'll okay, I like giving it. <laughs> <laughs> These are things you're not going to find in the church. You're not going to find in city hall. And you're sure not going to find it from the judge. And you're not going to go to the Supreme Court and they tell you. Is that right? However, I've been saying this for some time, and don't think white folks has not tried it. It's a lot of things that they've heard me say, and they went and developed it. However, until I said it, they had no knowledge of it. However, I don't fear them development because they always put a twist in it. That's where they mess up. That's where they mess up. Yes, sir. Want to hurry up? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir, Father. Uh, see, I have uh, two questions. Uh, the uh, first question is, um, he, before they got spider bite someone, uh, how would the uh, spider know that the person is uh, eating wrong? Yeah, by the odor. Oh. Not by the scent. Yeah, the odor. Scents are usually sweet, agreeable. Odors are not. You know, you ain't got odor. Uh, what's it like? It's kind of offensive. <laughs> Other words, when you put wrong in you, it lets you know. And if you've been doing, you know, this is your lifestyle, and you've been brought up this way, it's letting you know, but you don't know it's letting you know because you're used to it. You know, that's how dogs follow you. If we had a nice sweet scent, it'd be hard for them to follow because you would blend them with the other scents. But you carry a distinct odor, they follow you. Yes, sir. That's it? Uh, uh, Take your time. Yeah, one more question. Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, See, I noticed with myself, uh, sometimes I have uh, uh, out-of-body uh, experiences, and I have heard uh, other people say they have that. Like when we go to sleep, and, and, and then we get real stiff, uh, the only thing that I could do is just think, and then I'll call on your name. However, um, See, I was wondering, uh, why is it that we have out-of-body experiences? Well, a lot of times your real entity that's inside the body wants to get out. 
because the body is holding like a prisoner. You look at all these things and have these wicked dreams and Satan is about to take you over what not. It's like uh, one devil calls it, a white man calls it, the body, the veil of forgetfulness. You know, so when the entity of the body actually goes and beings with this Lord while the body is resting and repairing itself, the entity don't need no repair. So it's, it's like, you know, the, the person that put you in jail, they got to go in jail with you? No. They put you in jail and they leave. So the body is there and the entity leaves and goes to be with his Lord or goes to another level of heaven. Now, when it gets time, in, a lot of times in the absence of the entity, Satan comes in. And there's a natural alarm system to let you know there's a intruder. You know, people say, well, the, the covers tighten up, you can't move, you know, you see, but you, you, know, you, you can't blink. Then you think, you, all you can do is think and it's even hard to really think and concentrate. And you try to say, oh, I'll walk by, you finally get it out. Then it leaves. Then the full, the full portion of you come back and oh, man, it was gone. Yes, sir. You understand? You all understand what I just said? Oh, yes, sir. Okay. What? Yes, sir. Uh, excuse me. Yes, sir. Uh, may I ask uh, one more question? Okay. Uh, I'm going to have to get ready to go. Yes, yeah. sir. Okay. Uh, this uh, question here is, uh, see, I notice like when I speak with uh, different members, um, uh, see, I be trying to Share it like it is. However, see, I listen to Satan. Uh, like, 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 uh, some brothers that are real, uh, hardcore, you know. Um, see, I be wondering, how can I just come out and share the, the, uh, straight truth and just keep it real? Just do it. Don't expect no expectation, don't, because you're doing it. They suppose, oh, yeah, man, that's great. Forget that. If you got the, you know, what you call the straight truth or the truth, if you want to, if they're they going to listen to you and you want to share it, go ahead and share it, and don't expect no reaction. If they make one, say, man, I, I, I like that. Okay, well, good. If they say, look at these, uh, don't be all broken hearted. Yes, sir. You just leave it alone. Yes, sir. You, know, you can't make nobody believe. Nothing. You can't make them do anything. Your duty is only to share the truth if you have it. And leave it alone. Yes, sir. Okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, Father. Yes, sir. Uh, I want to give you all enough time to peruse the table. I remember when we first started, we had a table in the back with the audience. And we don't want to have four or five things on it that we were making ourselves. Now we have to have two or three tables or four tables put together. And it's still not big enough hard to put all the products that we make for ourselves. So I'd like for you to see it. 